So this is the Surah Al-Hujrat. You can consider this Surah is like a uh, character. It is teaching us a very beautiful character. The Hujrat means it's the chambers. And it started with the, the people who were trying to call Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi with very high sound and Allah reprimanded them, Allah warned them and showed the anger that if you do this, you might lose your, all your good deeds. You lose your all good deeds because of insulting the Prophet. So example, it can also apply on the people who are young ones. They cannot just shout to the elder one or... So it is a great uh, respect and protocol here about how you can deal with the Prophet. And similarly, those who are elders, those who are your spiritual leaders or those who are uh, your leaders or those who are your elders, you cannot just insult them by shouting them and calling them like you are dealing with your friends or some other people who are your 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 companions, etc. So what Allah said and he started with Bismillah Rahman Rahim in the name of Allah Rahman Rahim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, Oh you who believe do not put before Allah and His Messenger, put yourself before Allah and His Messenger, but fear Allah, indeed Allah is hearing the knowings. Allah, most respectful, and then His Messengers are, in this world, is are respectful, because they are like ambassadors of Allah. They are the representative of Allah to bring the message of Allah to mankind. Starting from Prophet Adam, who is the first human being, Noah, the Abraham, the Jesus, Moses, and the last Prophet Muhammad, 124,000 prophets of Allah who bring the message of Allah to mankind. So they are, they are the representative of Allah, they are the viceroys of Allah, they are the representative of Allah to us, to ambassadors of Allah. So they have a big respect, they have a big protocol. So Allah said, don't put yourself ahead of Allah and His Messenger. Oh, you believe, do not raise your voices above the voice of the prophet or be loud to him in his speech like loudness of some of you to others, lest your good deeds become worthless while you perceive not, while you do not know. So even to raise the voices when you're talking to the Prophet, you need to lower your voices. You need to put down your voices. You cannot just shout it. So it is a special protocol to Prophet Muhammad and all the Prophets, but also to those who are your elders, those who are your leaders, those who are your spiritual leaders, you need to be respect in front of them, not to make noise in front of them, to high, raise your voices, talk slowly, talk with respect. That is, uh, Allah is giving this, uh, uh, starting this surah with this uh, attitude to us, that there are people who you cannot raise your voice. And if you raise your voice, it is not right. But of course, uh, prophets are, Allah is mentioning about the prophet here, but also the similarly, those who are our elders or those who are our spiritual leaders or our leaders or parents or elder one, you cannot raise your voice in front of them. You cannot make noise in front of them. It is a very big insult and it is very big, bad, it is very bad character for the people who are raising their voice, of course, in the front of the Prophet or the Prophets, messengers of Allah or even to the leaders or spiritual leaders or parents or who are our elders. We need to respect and we need to lower down our voices in front of them. That's number one message from this Surah al Hujrat, the chambers. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Surely those who uh, lower their voices before the Messenger of Allah, they are the ones who, whose hearts Allah has tested for righteousness. For them is forgiveness and a great reward. Surely, those who call you from behind the chambers, most of them, they do not use their intelligence. They don't use their mind. Ask if they had been patient until you come out to them, it would have been better for them. But Allah is forgiving the merciful. And there is a next, next uh, message here, the next uh, lesson for a good attitude. Ya ayu alladina amanu injaakum fasikum binabain patabayyanu antusibu kaumam bi jahalatin patusbiu ala maafaltum nadimin. Oh, you believe, if there comes to you 
information from a disobedient person who is not following the commands of Allah, who is not a person who feared God, who is not a person who is a trustworthy or truthful person. So if you bring a news to you, some information, the news to you, investigate lest you harm a people out of ignorance and become over what you have done, you will be regretful. Now what is it? This word is very much needed us to be implemented in the world today. This is the world of media today. Media keep on accusing people, insulting people, slandering people, saying the lies to the people and people are not just believing it, they are messaging it to other people that I heard in the news like this and then that's all. Subhanallah, how evil is this? Example, one leader was accused for some corruption and it's not even brought to the court, it's not even guilty, proven, no witness, nothing, only in the media and people are sending messages, this person was caught by the corruption and then they are insulted and they are spreading the news to the WhatsApp and uh, Facebook and Viber, everywhere texting, I hear the news like this. It is very, very bad attitude. Masama, this is very bad to hear the news and believe it and propagate it. That's what Allah said that you will regret it and you will harm people with your ignorance. So that's very important thing. Right now what happened? You get the message from the WhatsApp, you don't verify it, you don't check it, you don't investigate it and you started to sending people about this message. Never do. Whenever you receive the message and news, don't forward it to the people unless you verify it. But if it is authenticated, you know that person, he is not a liar, he never lied to people, he is trustworthy and he is obedient to Allah. This person who is a good character person and if he says something and he should be eyewitness also. You cannot say I hear it from someone. Here there is no value in Islam. If you go to the court and you are the witness in the court for the murder, for the theft, for any crime, and the judge will come again okay, in the court and he you are testifying, I will say truth and not but anything but truth and I oath in the name of Allah. And you will say, I, I, I know this person, he murdered and I witness that he murdered. And the judge will say, how you know this one? I just hear the news. I heard in the news or somebody told me. So here say, the judge will say, throw this witness outside the court and never allow to come in my court again. Because he's talking here say, he's just talking here from the news. So it has no value at all. The news, here say, hear from someone has no value in Islam. Eyewitness, the person should be eyewitness and he is testifying. And even if you are hearing from the eyewitness, you should know that that person is not a liar. He is a truthful person. Then you believe in him. Not that you destroy the honor of someone, you insult someone, you make character assassination just from the hearsay, you will be going in the hellfire. If you slander people for murder or accused for corruption or accused for theft and you are publicizing it and you are insulting them, this person will hold your account on the day of judgment in front of Allah. You cannot get rid of it. You will be in a big problem. So. That is very important words for the for us today in the world today. Allah commanded us when there is a news come from unreliable source, verify it. Verify it before you can uh, spread it or believe it. Or unless you will harm people with your ignorance. And you will regret it that you were destroying this person but it was a lie. Allah. It was not true. And today the media talks are become very... Uh, truthful for the people where they hear it in media, okay, I hear this, it is like this, like this, like this. And you are destroying that person. That is very bad attitude in Islam. That is the, the age of media, the age of the news. Most of the news channel, a lot of news channel are lying to the people, they are making false stories, they are accusing people badly without any eyewitness, without the person is going in the court. Even if the person is caught by the police for accuse of a crime, and then he go to the court, the court will not call him mujrim, criminal. The court is still calling him mulzim, the person is accused. How, be, how worse that the people are believing in the news and they are already accusing people as a criminal. That is how bad is it. Even the person who is brought to the court 
and he is caught by the police, they still call him accused, alleged. They don't call him a crime criminal yet. Unless the witness will come and they will testify and then the proven and the person is guilty and the judge will say this person is guilty, he is a criminal. Then you can call, then only you can call him criminal. When he will accept it, then he will not defend anymore. How, uh, how evil is this? The media, the news, they say somebody is criminal and then you believe criminal. And you are sending WhatsApp messages to other people. This person is a criminal, he is a corrupt, he is a murderer, he is a terrorist, he is so and so and so and so. And then you all believe in all those media. Media has become like all everything. Media is witness, media is a, uh, the one who testifies, also become judge. All in one. And media become also executionist, the one who executes also. Everything becomes media now. So it is a very bad system of the uh, this uh, news uh, in the world today, where media is acting like a lawyer, media is acting like a uh, witness, media is acting acting like a judge, and media is acting like the one who can execute also the punishment on the person on the criminal. And the media is speaking to people like they are have a right to make people criminal, and they have a right to make make people. Even the, the elections, the media is working to bring the corrupt leader because they give money to media. Media is getting money from the politician. Even you are the worst kind of politician, you are the most corrupt politician, but you give money to media, the millions, hundreds of millions, you are the most righteous person in the world, which is implemented in the world today. The media is the one doing a lot of evil to the people today. They bring the corrupt leader to get money from them and the good leader, they, they hide them. And they, they are also destroying their character because of they get the money from the bad leaders, the corrupt politicians. And those who are politicians who are supposed to be not corrupt, the media will show them ugly. And the corrupt politician, media will show them very good. So that is a, a very bad system of um, uh, in the world today where the media is really very evil and they are destroying the character of the people and the evil people they are showing them very good. So unfair media and we should not believe and we should not propagate the, what we hear from the media, rather we test, verify the news. كثير من الأمر ليعلم ولكن الله حبب إليكم الإيمان وزينه في قلوبكم وكرهه وكرها إليكم الكفر والفسوق والإسيان أولئك أمر راشدون and know that among you is the messenger of Allah if he were to obey you in much of the matter you would be in difficulty but Allah has endeared to you the true faith the iman and has made it pleasing to your hearts and he and has made hateful to you the disbelief, defiance and disobedience. Hateful in our hearts, in your hearts. Those are the rightly guided. So Allah said if messengers will listen most of you, then everything will be changed and then your religion become difficult for you. So Allah is the one making everything easy for you. And Allah said that Allah has make it uh, iman, the faith in your heart become love. And he make in your heart that disbelief become hateful. And also this disobedient to Allah and um, wrong, a person who is wrong is also hateful to you. So if you are a true believer, you love the Iman and you, dis, uh, you don't love the disbelief and you don't love disobedient and rebellion to Allah. You always like to be obedient to Allah if you are a believer and if Allah make your heart like this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Fadla min, min Allah wa ni'mah. And that is the blessings of Allah. Uh, is bounty from Allah and the favor. And Allah is all knowing, all wise. And if two factions among the believers should fight, then make reconciliation between of two, between those two parties, those, those two factions. But if one of them opposes to the other, oppresses the other, injustice to other, then fight 
then fight against the one that oppresses, making justice until it returns to the obedience ordinance of Allah. The ordinance of Allah means uh, to the command of Allah. And if re he, it returns that faction who was doing wrong in justice is returned, then make settlement between them in justice and act justly. Indeed, Allah loves those who are acting justly. So it is uh, very important when two groups are fighting, make reconciliation. But if one is doing injustice to other group, then fight against them until they will surrender to the command of Allah and then let them to make in to reconciliation and with justice and those who act justly, Allah love them. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَىٰ فَاسْلِهُ بَيْنَ أَخْوَيْكُمْ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Surely the believers are brothers. This is the biggest fraternity. There's all, all those who believe in one God, they are brothers in faith. So, reconcile. So that is a beautiful ayah that all the believers are brothers. Okay? We all uh, believers are brothers in, in, humanity, in faith. Today the Muslims are divided into different countries and nations like Pakistanis and Arabs and Saudis and Imarti and Qatri and Malaysians and Indonesians and Bahraini or Moroccans and Algerians and Sudanese and Nigerians and they are now, they don't mind about the, what Allah is saying in the Quran, Innamal Mu'minun Ikhwa, those who say that our God is Allah, they are the brothers. La ilaha illallah. You are the brothers. They forget about this. Now what they talk, Saudi is a brother of Saudi and Pakistan is a brother of Pakistan and Malaysian is a brother of Malaysian. And you as a Muslim, if you go to any Muslim country, they don't allow entry. But Americans and Europeans are allowed to enter. And if you have a Europe American visa, they will welcome you. Okay, you can come because you have a Europe American visa. Where is the brotherhood of the Muslims? Now what? They don't allow you to enter because you are not Saudi or you are not Malaysian. But if you have a visa of America, they say come in, you are allowed to enter because you have American visa, you have a European visa. So they become like puppets of Europe and America. The Muslims are supposed to be one country. We all Muslims are supposed to be only one country and that country called United States of Islam, USI. United States of the, all the 57 Muslim countries, they should not be 57 countries, they should be only one country with one leader, one ruler, okay, and that's Khalifa, or that's going to be called Amir al muminin And then all the Muslims are under one commandship with one law, the law of the Quran, and to the way of the prophets. And one constitution, the constitution of that country is Quran. And there will be no interest, no riba, there will be no injustice, there is no corruption, there is no murder, and then there is death penalty for those who murder innocent people. And there will be no theft, there will be no uh, fornication, there will be no rape. And people will have equality. There is no such thing that uh, some paper, money are very expensive, so you become slave of those countries. No. In the Islamic country, the, which all Muslim united, there will be a equality, there will be a paper, no paper currency, but there will be gold and silver, so there will be no injustices. And even the paper will be issued according to the golden weight of gold and the weight of silver. So you will still use the gold and silver as your money and not the paper which is monopolized by the IMF to make some countries superior to other countries, so other countries become slave of those countries. So that is a bad system which is implemented by the Zionists in the world today for their Zionist agenda. So we always struggle that how all the Muslims can be united as one and not to be divided. And Allah subhanahu ta'ala, next words of the Surah Al-Hujrat, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amunu la yaskharu qawmun min qawmin asa'in yakunu khayran minhum wa la nisa'u min nisa'in asa'in yakunna yakunna khayran fi minhun wa la talmizu anfusakum wa la tanabazu bil alqab bi'sa mal ismu alfusuqa ba'da al-iman wa man lam yatub fa ulaika humuz zalimun So very beautiful words Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said O oh, you who believe let not people ridicule other people, 
perhaps may be bet better than them. Nor let women ridicule other women, perhaps they may be better than them. And do not insult one another, and do not call each other by bad names. Evil is the bad names mention of the disobedience after the faith. It is like disobedience to Allah when you have a faith already and now you are speaking bad words to other people. So no bad words speaking, no insulting, no giving the bad words, no insulting. Insulting a human being, it is a great sin. The Prophet Muhammad said, you insult a, a person, it is more bigger sin than to destroying the Kaaba for 70 times. People talk about the Jews, Zionists want to destroy Masjid al -Aqsa. It is more bigger sin to destroying the uh, insulting a, a person than to destroying the Masjid al or to destroying the Kaaba. More bigger sin to destroying the heart of a human, a person heart for your personal agenda, for your personal uh, ego. You insult someone publicly. Now you are making a great sin that like you are destroying the Kaaba for 70 times. So Allah said, do not insult people, do not laugh at the people. The women should not laugh at the other women. And not to say the bad words. Okay, in like in uh, everywhere there are some bad words which people speak to other people. It is not good to say the bad words and it is like bad, fusuka uh, bad aliman. It is you are going to the evil way after you become a believer. So do not do it. Whoever not repent from these bad attitudes, then they are the wrongdoers. They are the injustice people to whom Allah punish. And Allah said, O you believe, do not make, uh, avoid it the most of the suspicions. Surely the sum of the suspicions are sin. So people who are always paranoid, they always talk, think evil about others, they always suspect others, it is not good. Because sometimes suspicious is very important. Like example, in middle of the night, you see some people outside your house rooming around, then you can suspect maybe they are criminals, so I need to call a police. Okay. Or some other way, then when you are doubting, somebody want to steal something from your shop or from your office, from your factory, then you found out, and then you can put some CCTV for protection. These are okay things. But always suspicious to people, then Allah said there are many suspicions. There are some suspicions which are very big sin. So avoid much of the suspicion. And when there is a need to be suspicion in some matter, then do it with care without breaking the heart of the people. Suspecting people is insulting people also. But unless if they are doing some suspicion action, you have no right to suspect them. But if they are doing some suspicious action, then you have to do it in the right way, the way that you cannot break the heart of the people. Then Allah said, وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا And don't spy people. And people are, you know, after suspicion, they started to spy people. They started to look, make some uh, actions to try to spy people. So do not spy people. And do not uh, backbite each other. Would one of you like to eat the flesh of his blood, dead brother? You would hate it and fear Allah. Indeed, Allah is accepting of accepting of repentance, the merciful. So Allah said, don't backbite of one another because it is like you are eating the flesh of your dead brother. And you will hate it, that you will eat the your dead brother's meat. So hate also to not to backbite people. It is a very big sin to backbite. It is like eating the flesh of your dead brother. People are asking question about if I uh, swallow little water, will my break fast? My fast will break. If I eat mistakenly some food, will my break fast will break? And they have so many questions about worrying about the nullification of their fasting. What about if you are eating the meat of your dead brother? You think your fasting is accepted by Allah? You are in fasting. You are fasting right now, and then you are sitting with your friend and you are talking bad about your other friend. 
You're sitting with one brother and you're talking bad about your other brother. And you are eating his flesh of that brother who is already... Uh, you are like you are eating the flesh of a dead brother. Because he's not there, he cannot defend himself. And you are talking against him. So Allah said, you hate it, so you don't, uh, don't do it. Fear Allah. In Allah Tawaburahim, surely Allah is uh, one who accepts the repentance. Merciful. So stop making the ghibat or backbiting or chismis for other people. It is a very, very, very big sin. It is like you are eating the dead meat of your brother or like you are eating the dead meat of your sister. So avoid this. Even if he is not a Muslim, because even not Muslim, they are also our brothers. They are our brothers in humanity because they are also children of Adam. So a person who says, lie, 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 they are our brothers in faith. But the person who is not even Muslim, who is not even believes in one God, but he is still the son of Adam and son of Hawa. So they are still our brothers and sisters in humanity. And that is the next verse about it. Ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakari wunza wa ja'alnakum shuhubu muqabaila li ta'arifu ta'arifu inna khalaqnakum min dhallahi yadkakum inna Allah alimun khabir. O mankind, surely we created you from one male and one female and made you into nations and tribes so you can recognize each other. So why Allah make, we, Allah make us from one male and one female? Who is the one male? Adam, Prophet, and Hawa, the wife of Adam. And Allah created all of us from them. So they are our forefather, the father of the mankind. So if we are all the children of Adam and children of Hawa, the who we are all the human beings in the world, we are brothers and sisters in humanity. And Allah made us, us in different branches and different tribes, just for identification. For example, there are 100 Abdullah live in our community. How we recognize them? Maybe we can say he's Abdullah Arab, he's Abdullah Ajam, he's Abdullah uh, Chinese, he's Abdullah Japanese, he's Abdullah American, he's Abdullah Maranao, he's Abdullah Tausuk. So that is only for identification. The branches, the tribes, the nations, or different languages, or different colors, is just for identification. Not more than that. Only for edification. And Allah says, In akramakum in Allah yatkakum. Surely the most honorable, the more honorable with Allah is the one who more fearing Allah. So if you want to be more honorable, fear Allah more, you are more honorable. Your race, your language, your tribe has no value with Allah. Nothing. Allah is the one who making. Even if you are insulting of the tribe of someone, it is kufar. Because Allah... The, the family of uh, anyone, it is kufar. Why? Because he did not choose his family. He did not choose his uh, nation or he did not choose his race. And you are insulting. Uh, you are Chinese. You are Chinese, no good. You are African. Africans, no good. Now you are not pointing to that person. You are pointing to Allah. Because Allah made him African. Allah made him Chinese. Allah made him Caucasian. Allah made him Indian. Allah made him Arab. So you are not pointing to him, but you are pointing to Allah. That Allah made the wrong race, or Allah made the wrong tribe, or Allah made the wrong language. It's very dangerous. Racism is a, a Muslim, a person, a believer, he cannot be racist. Because we believe all the races made by Allah, and all the races are equal. No superiority. Prophet said in the last khutbah, in khutbah al -Vida, no black is superior to white, and no white is superior to black. No Arab is superior to non-Arab. And no non Arab is superior to Arab. You are all equal in sight of Allah. We are all equal. All the human beings are equal. What makes you superior to Allah? If you fear Allah. Sino masmatas kai Allah yung sino mastakuts Allah. Okay? So that's very important words that all the human beings are brothers and sisters in humanity. And only the things which can make you superior is the fear of Allah, your consciousness of Allah. In Allah Alimul Khabir, surely Allah is knowing, aware. قَالَتِ الْعَرَابُ عَمَنَّا قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَكِنْ كُنُوا قُولُوا أَسْلَمْنَا وَلَمَّا يَدْخُلِ الْإِيمَانَ فِي قُلُوا إِيمَانُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ وَإِنْ تُطِعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ لَا يَلِدْكُمْ مِنْ عَمَالِكُمْ شَيَّا إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُرُ رَيْمٍ And the Arab, the Bedouin say, those who are traveling in the desert, we believe. Say, you did not believe, but you only say that we are submitting to the command of Allah. So when you submit, you say Muslim, 
You are submitting to command of Allah, but Iman is not just entering your heart. Iman will enter when you work hard for it. When you pray and you steadfast to worship one God and you fast, you keep charity, you struggle in the way of Allah, then the Iman will increase in your heart gradually. And if you obey Allah and His Messenger, He will not deprive you from your good deeds of anything. Indeed, Allah is forgiving, the merciful. The believers are only uh, the believers are only the one, those who believe in Allah and His Messenger and then doubt, don't doubt after death. Then is struggle with their properties and their with their wealth and their lives in the cause of Allah. It is those who are the truthful. Say, would you acquaint Allah with your religion while Allah knows whatever is in the heavens and the earth and whatever is in the earth and Allah is all-knowing of everything. They consider it, it a favor to you. They have accepted Islam. Say, do not consider your Islam a favor to me. Rather, Allah has conferred upon you His favor that He guided you to the faith if you should be the truthful. So they were trying to say that, oh, we believe in Allah, we believe in Islam. So Allah said, don't say that you big favor upon me. It is Allah who favor upon you to give you the Islam. The Islam is beautiful. You see, look at your fasting and Allah is getting rid of us, all our spiritual and our physical diseases. We pray and then Allah cleans us with the praying. We give charity, Allah cleans our wealth. When we make Hajj, Umrah, Allah cleans us very deeply. When we eat halal, it gives us good uh, health and good uh, spiritual health and good physical health. When we avoid the haram, we avoid from the spiritual diseases and physical diseases. So it's a blessing to us. People who are eating haram like pig, they have so many sicknesses, they have so many hardships. People who drink alcohol, they have so many hardships. So Allah is giving us a beautiful system of life and then every year we fast and then we, whatever is still in our system will get out. And we will become totally purified. So it is the blessings of Allah, the Islam upon us. It's not that we are favoring upon Allah. Allah doesn't need us. If all the people of the world become disbelievers, there is no problem for Allah. Nothing will decrease the power of Allah. And if all the people become a believer, nothing increases the power of Allah. Why? Because His power is infinite, unlimited. He doesn't need, we need Islam, we need the Iman, we need the good deeds. So we will not go to hellfire and we can go to paradise. By the grace of Allah, by the mercy of Allah. Inna Allah ya'alamu ghaib as-samawati. And then Allah said, Ballahu yamunu alaykum in hadakum. And Allah has favor upon you that He has guided you to the faith, to the iman. Panampalataya, if you should be truthful, if you are the truthful. Inna Allah ya'alamu ghaib as-samawati wal-ard. Wallahu basiru mimma ta'amalun. Surely Allah has knowledge of unseen of the heavens and the earth and Allah is seeing of what you do and Allah is watching whatever we are doing also we are reading the words of the surah al-qaf and when Allah said وَلَقَدْ خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلُمَانْ to us we should be in حَقْبِهِ نَفْسِ وَنَعْنْ وَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ and we have created man and we, and we know what his soul whispers to him. So what our soul whispers to us, Allah knows this. And we are closer to him, nearer to him than his jugular vein. So Allah said we are nearer to human being than his jugular vein. Allah is very near. It is all universe created by Allah and whatever in the universe is created by Allah. And all the universe in front of Allah is smaller than atom. So all the atom is very close to Allah. He is very close to us, nothing far from Allah. He is Kharib. He said, When my slave asks me about me, say, I am very near. So Allah is always very near to us and is not far away from us. He is watching us and He knows what in our hearts. And Allah SWT also said the uh, words that. Uh, 
we created the heavens and the earth in six days and there was no uh, tiredness touches, touches to us, no fatigueness touches to us. So that is a beautiful verse that Allah created the heavens and the earth in the, in the six days, sorry, and then no fatigueness was touches us. So Allah was not getting tired with creation, this universe. But when you read the Bible, Bible is a mistake in the first page of Genesis. In Old Testament, God created the heavens and the earth in the six days, but on the seventh day he rested. Rested means he was tired, he was have a weakness and he tired, so he need to rest. So it is impossible that God, the true God, Almighty Allah, never get tired and never get weakness and he is always powerful, omnipotent. So it is mistake in the Bible, but the Quran rejected mistake and they said that God created heavens and the earth in the six days, but he got no fatigue. No, nothing touches any fatigue to him. No hardship, no tiredness touches him. He is, has unlimited power. He never be attributed with weakness. Also, we read uh, another surah, the surah to Zariyat. And where is the, our purpose of our life mentioned also. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا خَلَقُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And we created not the jinn and the man except to worship us. So that is the purpose of our life that Allah created us to become his slave, to follow his commandments, nothing else. We eat, we drink, we do sports or we do earning for the halal income. All are the commands of Allah. Hanabwa is command of Allah. Pakain, inum halal is also the orders of Allah. So our life is just to follow the commandments of Allah, to become his slave, to worship him. So what Allah said, that I did not create the man and the jinn jin and the man except to worship me. I created not the jinn and man. That I not created jinn and man except to worship me. So Allah created us for only one purpose. Worshipping Allah. Follow the commandments of Allah. That's our purpose of life. And we were reading also the Surah Al-Fatha. The conquest. And yesterday night we have a beautiful dua in Tahajjud, uh, which says, um, Allah said, wa wasayna li sabi wa bi walidayi ihsana hamalatuhu muhu karha wa wada'atuhu kurha wa hamaluhu fi salu thalatuna shahra hatta iza ablahu ashuddahu wa bala gha arba'ina sanatan qala rabbi awzayni an ashkuruka ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta and when and we have enjoined upon man to his parents, to good with parents, good treatment. His mother carried him with hardship and gave birth to him with hardship. And his gestation, gestation and weaning, the breastfeeding period is 30 months. So total. Uh, when the baby started to get big until the two years of feeding, it calls like 30 months. The initial uh, three months, the first trimester is very small. The fetus, it's not like worthy of carrying something. But after the last two semesters, it's carrying the very heavy load in the womb and very much, much more hardship. And then uh, until the another two years for the breastfeeding, so total is 30 months of hardship. The first three months, the first trimester is also hardship, but last two semester is more hardship. And then another 12, 24 months of breastfeeding, which is also an, a very hardship for a woman to bear it for the sake of Allah. So Allah is commanding the children, especially to good treatment, take care, good take care of the mothers who give this hardship for the children in their, uh, when they were child, they were infants and child. Until he, when he reaches to maturity and reaches the age of 40 years, he said, Now there is a dua mentioned what he dua makes. Allah says, Our Lord, my Lord, enable me to be grateful for your favor which you have bestowed upon me and upon my parents and to work righteousness of each which you will approve and make righteous for me my children my offspring 
Indeed, I have repented to you, and indeed, I am of among those who are Muslims, submitting to the commands of Allah. And Surah Al-Fatah we were reading is mentioned about the conquest of Makkah, and is mentioned about the Inna Fatah na laka Fatah Mubina. Indeed, we have given you a clear conquest, and it's about the Fatah Makkah. And it's mentioned about the when the Prophet Muhammad Sallam was going to the pilgrimage, and they were stopped by the mushrikeen and. There was a promise that they will go to the Makkah, they will do the tawaf, and they will shave the head, etc. But it was uh, made a treaty. They did not allow, but they allowed next year. So the it was uh, explained that why it was uh, when it was shown in the dream, it was not said this year, but you will do it soon. So next soon <coughs> was it was next year, and that treaty was make them permanently victory because. They have a lot of time to preach people, and then the Muslims were increase a lot until the Muslims were victorious and entered to Makkah with success. So that delay of pilgrimage was the cause was the treaty, the Sulaiman Arabia, and then because of that treaty, the Muslims become very strong, and finally they were able to enter to Makkah with victorious. And to Allah belongs the kingdom of the heaven and the earth, heavens and the earth. He forgives whom he wills and punishes whom he wills, and ever is Allah forgiving the merciful. Those who remain behind will say, "When you set out toward the war booty to take it, let us follow you." They wish to change the words of Allah. Say, "Never will you follow us." Thus did we say. Thus did thus did Allah say before. So they will say, "Rather you envy us, but in." In fact, they were not understanding except a little. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, uh, "The one I was saying about the dream of the Prophet, surely Allah has showed to His Messenger the vision, the dream in truth. You will surely enter Masjid Al Haram if Allah wills, in safety, in peace, with your head shaved and short, or either shortened and shortened." Not fearing anyone, he knew what you did not know, and has arranged before that a conquest near. So it, this uh, delay of the one pilgrimage for one year was a reason for the conquest because of the treaty. Because the Meccans, the uh, pagans, were not able to follow the treaty, but during that time the Muslims were increased in number until the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he brought the. Army of ten thousand soldiers and entered to Makkah victorious without any bloodshed, without any war. And he forgave everyone. He, while he was thrown out from Makkah and his relatives were killed, his loved ones were killed, his properties were stolen, and he was tortured and they were uh, boycotted for three years and they were they have no food enough food for three years. They were starving and they were eating the leaves of the tree. All the, everything, Prophet Muhammad Sallam forgave. Not the Sri Malik Muliyam. No blame upon all of you. He forgave all the people of Makkah and he invited them to Islam. So that was the greatness of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam. That that high level of injustice done to him and he forgave everything. Who Allah Dhiyar Salla Rasulahu bil Huda wa Dini Hakki liuzir wa la Dini kulli wa kafa bil Nai Shahida. It is He who sent. His messenger Muhammad with guidance and the religion of truth to many, to superior in over all religions, and sufficient is Allah as witness. So, meaning here, Din is a, a also a law that Allah make it against superior against all the laws. Muhammad Rasulullah wa Ladina ma'ahu wa shidda wa al kufari ruhma wa bainahum tara. هم ركوا عن سجدا يبتغون من فضل من الله ورضوانا سيما في وجوههم من أثر السجود ذلك مثل في التوراة ومثل في الإنجيل كزارعين أخرج شد أو 
فأز فأزره فاستغلز فاستوى على سوقه يعجب يعجب الزراء ليغيز بهم الكفار وعد الله الذين آمنوا وعمل الصالحات منهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما. So now that is the description of Prophet Muhammad and his followers. Allah mentioned here, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and the Muhammad Rasulullah is only one this place in whole Quran, which is our Shahada that we we say Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. There is no god except Allah. Wa Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, and we testify. I testify there is Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, the prophet, the last prophet, messenger of Allah. And it is a verbatim word here, Muhammadur Rasulullah. The start of the last words of Surah Tufata or the conquest, Muhammadur Rasulullah, the Muhammad, the messenger of Allah. And those with him are uh, hard against the disbelievers and merciful among themselves, loving and merciful among themselves with the believers. You see them bowing and prostrating, bowing, bow down, and then putting the head on the floor, the sajda, seeking bounty from Allah and His pleasure, His happiness, happiness of Allah. Their sign is in their faces from the effect of sujud. So you can see the some people have the, this mark here because when keep on sajda, the blood become uh, hardened here, and then you can see the the shining of uh, there is a mark here on the some people's. But other people they don't. But some people, because of lots of sajda making, putting their head on the floor, they get some mark here, and that mark will be shining on the day of judgment. This mark of the sujud will be shining on the day of judgment. Maybe these people who are usually uh, sajda on the floor, then they get bored because we are people who are making sajda on the carpets. They don't get that shine. But those who are making sajda on the floor. On the earth, they are getting this mark on their forehead, and Allah said that uh, that is the description in the Torah. So Allah mentioned the companion of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam description in Torah, the book given to Prophet Musa, that there will be last messenger and his companion will be like this, and their description in the Injil, the book given to Prophet Isa, is as a plant which produces its offshoots. And it strengthens them so they grow firm and stand upon their stalks, delighting the sowers, delighting those who sow this plant. They are happy to see this beautiful plant. So that is a description of Prophet Muhammad and his companions mentioned in the Injil, the book given to Prophet Isa or Jesus Christ. So he, Allah, may enrich by them the disbelievers. Allah has promised. Those who believe and do righteous deeds, among them, forgiveness and a great reward. So Allah can use these people, the Prophet Muhammad and his company, against enraging against the disbeliever. And Allah has promised those who believe and do righteous deeds, among them, forgiveness and a great reward. Wa'ad Allahu ladi namanu amil sawaliyati minhum maqfiratu wajran azima. Then Allah and Allah promise with those who believe and do righteous deeds for them. The forgiveness of Allah and Ajran Azim and Ajran Azim is the entering in paradise. How much you can have your money? You become one hundred billion dollar or even one thousand billion dollar. You earn. You are not successful according to the Quran. You are only successful when you die as a believer and you uh, resurrect on the day of judgment as a believer. Then you will be saved from the hellfire and you can enter to paradise. That's only the success. No other success. If Allah is angry with you, you are a loser, and if Allah is happy with you, you are successful. So that is the standard of the success in the Quran. So Allah says, "Maqfiratum wajran azima." For them will be the forgiveness and great reward. And great reward here is to enter in paradise, save from the hellfire, and enter to paradise forever. And that is the greatest reward. We always struggle for death. We follow the commands of Allah. We follow the prophets. We, and also we follow his companions and his family, Alibad. So what we do? Follow the commands of Allah. Follow the prophets of Allah. All the prophets, last prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abraham, Jesus, Moses, Noah. All the prophets we follow, but especially the last prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we follow the community of, as a community, as as we are a community, we follow the community of the community of the prophet Muhammad. 
and then it was his family, Alebet, and then it was his Sahaba, that his companions. We follow their way, that how they were obeying to Allah and His Messenger, and how they were have a good character, and how they were uh, brave people, and how they were uh, fight against evil, and how they were righteous people. These are the example for us to follow and to get success from Allah. So, the guidance is the Quran. That's the Quran that we should follow. And the Prophet Muhammad is the explanation, the live practical explanation of the Quran. The Prophet Muhammad is a uh, practical of the Quran. So, Prophet, the Aisha, the wife of Prophet Muhammad said that if you want to see a walking Quran, then you look at the life of the Prophet Muhammad. The Prophet Muhammad he implemented the Quran in his life and he showed us how to implement the Quran in your life. And then he, his community, his family, Alibet, his wives and children and his uh, relatives and his companions, the Sahaba, they showed a way as a community, how you can act as a community in a right way, which is according to the command of Allah and according to the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Then we can be successful as, a, as successful as a family and we can be successful as a community. Okay, so we have examples are like Prophet Muhammad individual example, his family is an example for our families, and his companion is example for our companions. Okay, so complete now. The Quran, the way of the Prophet Muhammad way of his alibet, his family, and the way of his companion. So Allah give us the complete guidance in whatever individual way, how our, we and our family follow, we follow. Prophet Muhammad and his family, and how we follow as a community to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companion, the we and our companion, we should follow to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companion 